Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson and an exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of the government men known only as Operative 132, who for many years has investigated the otherwise unexplainable. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as Operative 132. My name is not important, but you can call me Special Agent X-132, or just X-132. I work on an above-top-secret project called the Enigma Files, and this is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as Operative 132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Howdy there, partners. I'm here to tell you about straight shooter quality chewing tobacco. And just like the name says, it's a high quality, juicy, and sweet long cut tobacco that's just jam packed with flavor. So much flavor, you're gonna wanna jam pack this stuff right in your gosh darn lip right now. I've been using this stuff so long, I ain't barely got no teeth left, but I love it. So saddle up and reach for the straight shooter quality chewing tobacco from the Thomas Prince Company. And now, here is Jack Ferguson as Operative 132, G-Man. This above top secret report from the Enigma Files is marked Discovery in Tibet. It is Thursday, April 13th, 1953. My partner, FBI agent Cooper, and I are on a stakeout in the industrial district to follow up on an informant's tip. This is just part of the work we do on the above top secret project, Agartha. Is this the right place, O132? Amalgamated Technologies Building, yep. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, Agent Cooper. Hmm. Amalgamated Technologies. What? You see something? No. I just remembered that I've been here before, outside the Amalgamated Technologies building. The last time I was nearly killed. And I'm wondering if it's connected to the sighting we're investigating now. When were you here, O-132? Uh, a while back. You know, some communists were around. You always say that. What happened? Uh, that's classified. Sorry, Agent Cooper. But I'm SC-4 now, O-132. Hmm? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, I guess I can tell you. This has been bottled up in my own head for a long time now. And you're my partner. <sighs> well, it's all related to how Project Agartha came about. It goes back before my time with the NSA, even before the war. And when I say war, I'm talking about the big one, not this Korean stalemate we've gotten ourselves stuck in now. It all started in October 1939. Back then, I was known as Special Agent X-132 of the U.S. government's OSS, the Office of Strategic Services. And I was in the Zhigazhe region of Tibet as part of a small American intelligence team investigating Nazi activity in the same area that occurred two months earlier. On one of the last nights of the expedition, we were all listening to the war news from Europe at our camp when something extremely strange happened. According to an official Polish telegram, Warsaw has been bombed six times today. The telegram adds that fighting of a most serious nature continues on the whole length of the front. It's just a matter of time before we're in it. I still think that Stalin and the Soviets are the bigger threat. You would, Colonel Burton. My boss, Colonel Burton, and my mentor, Special Agent X-13, were the brass on the team. Colonel Burton worked for the U.S. Army's Special Projects Division. He ran the Enigma Group 
which was concerned with intelligence regarding otherwise unexplained phenomena. You think the Soviets have anything on these underworld critters, X-13? I doubt it, Colonel. Special Agent X-13 was a legend in this business. As a spy during World War I, he was captured by the Austrians. He was starved and tortured, but he never cracked. After the war, he was involved with the U.S. Signal Corps attempt to contact Mars with radio waves. The results have never been made public. He's also the guy who hired me for the job. What do you think, X-132? Well, we're four miles south of where our intelligence tells us the Nazis, led by biologist Dr. Ernst Schaefer, quit their search a little over two months ago. I think that puts us in the general vicinity of where these sightings occurred. Turn that thing off. A man in a black cape looking down from a strange cave on the side of a mountain? At least, that's what Dr. Schaefer reported back to Berlin. From an ancient underground civilization? <sighs> Come on, X-13. I know your credentials, but this has got to be a lot of baloney. Colonel, you'll soon find that it's imperative that we check out every wild story, especially if the Nazis are involved. We're dealing with an authoritarian government based around a secret society here. And if there really are a bunch of... Aryan supermen down there ready to sign up with Hitler, we're in for some serious trouble. All governments are secret societies, X-13. I would have thought you would have seen that by now. Colonel Burton, that's up to the people to decide, not me. I'm just here to see to it that we know more than anybody else knows, and to make them think we only know what they want us to know. It's a measure of national defense. Listen, boys, I've seen files on almost everything you can think of. Ghosts, airships from outer space. Did you hear that? We heard it all right. Some rustling in the trees nearby. Within an instant, X-13 and I had our standard issue sidearms drawn and ready for action. Whoever you are, freeze! We're Americans. Do not mess around with us! Last warning! We will fire! Yeah, something had stumbled across us, all right. And we were in a high pursuit of whoever, whatever it might be. Wait! Look here! X-13 had found a fresh splattering of blood against the side of a tree. Whatever this thing was, we had hit it. Then we turned our flashlights down to the ground nearby to see a thin trail of blood leading away. All right, boys. Let's follow it. We followed the trail for a short distance through the trees. It led us to a rocky cave in the side of a mountain, just large enough for only one man to slip through at a time. Who's going in first? I'll go. X-13 slowly pushed his way into the cave entrance. I was right behind him, and one of the army guys followed me. A short passageway seemed to open into an even larger cavern, but the blood trail seemed to drop off the cave floor into a seemingly endless abyss. This pit was so far down that our flashlights couldn't even reach the bottom. End of the line, X-132. Whatever it was, it's down there now. We stood at the edge of this abyss and started turning our flashlights around to see the other parts of this enormous cavern. We quickly realized this was no ordinary cave. The chamber we were in had been deliberately hollowed out. The rock walls were carved and polished, but it didn't appear to be done by hand. Also, there was a strange set of text characters written into the sides of the walls, like Egyptian hieroglyphics. That's when it happened. Something like a bolt of lightning came at us from the abyss below. We ducked just as it hit the cave ceiling above us, showering down bits of rock and dust and sparks all around. And that's when we heard it. When we heard him. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
We'll be back with Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Hello there, I'm Bruce Abernathy, the star of Hey There, Watch Your Poison on the Dumont Television Network. You know, when I'm finished with a hard day at the studio, there's nothing that I enjoy more than a glass of Empire Whiskey. And if you're a man like me, then I'm guessing Empire would be your drink too. It's a blended American whiskey that has a frighteningly smooth finish. So whether it's your first drink or your last, this is the only whiskey that's gonna get you where you need to go. So take it from me, Bruce Abernathy, and pick up a bottle of Empire tonight. Buddy, this is whiskey. And now, we're back with Jack Ferguson as G-Man Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales, The Enigma Files. There we were, my mentor Special Agent X-13 and me, hiding in a cave in Tibet, October 1939. We had chased some kind of dark shape into the cave after wounding it, and whatever it was, it laughed at us and fired some kind of crazy energy beam weapon at us. You okay, X-132? Yeah. What, what the? This is not your territory, surface dwellers. Get down! Ah! The army guy behind us got hit directly by another one of those energy blasts, and he was reduced to dust in seconds. Just what were we dealing with here? On your feet, X-132. X-13 and I jumped back up and started down a passageway. We could hear more movement ahead of us. And then, we heard him again. You are trespassing. And now, you must die, surface dwellers. Surface dwellers. That's the second time this guy had used those words. And then the cave walls all around us started to shake and rumble. Something had been triggered for it to happen like this. We've got to get out of here. Go! Go! We turned around and ran for our lives as huge boulders started collapsing down around us. We bent around each corner, running as fast as we could. And that's when a falling rock dislodged from the ceiling and landed right on my head. I vaguely remember dropping to the ground and then I was out. They say that when you're knocked out cold, you don't think of anything. But for me, that wasn't true. I didn't think about the cave or the mission. I thought about only one thing. My girl back home. Her name was Diane Davis. We grew up together in Alabama. She was waiting for me once I got back from this crazy assignment. She was always waiting for me, if you know what I mean. I've loved her since we were kids in the neighborhood. We'd stay out after dark trying to catch lightning bugs until our folks called us home. Sure, she came from a screwed up background. Alcoholic parents, rodents are a part of their diet, the depression was on. We all knew the deal. But that didn't mean I didn't love her. She was going to college back in the States now and she was all I could think about when my life was in danger. Next time, I'd tell her how much I love her. I'd tell her how often I think about her. And I'd... X-132. X-132, can you hear me? X-132, wake up! I came to outside the cave with my head wrapped in a bandage. It was the next morning. I had been knocked out all night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right, X-13. What happened? You took a nasty bump on the head down there, Special Agent X-132. You're lucky to be alive. We lost four other men. Colonel Burton was right. I looked over and saw three body bags, plus one little bag for whatever remains of that army guy who took a shot from that strange energy beam. What was that thing down there? Talking about surface dwellers. I don't know. But I do know one thing. If Dr. Schaefer and the Nazis get their hands on some of those lightning beam weapons, we are all doomed. What if the Nazis are allied with these things? Why else would Schaefer be out there? If our intelligence is correct, then we've just learned more than the Nazis ever did, Colonel. 
Right, X-132. We've just got to hope Dr. Schaefer and the Nazis never saw those advanced weapons. And we've got to hope these creatures stay away from the United States of America. It's a measure of national defense. To our knowledge, that was the first time any American had ever encountered the men from within the Earth. We learned that the Agartha legend, that Dr. Schaefer and the Nazis were investigating in Tibet, was a legitimate concern. But we just didn't know what it meant then. The next puzzle piece would appear about six years later in Berlin. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk more about that later. I gotta hit the can and grab a cup of joe. Master Sun. So, what news of the surface? The surface dwellers have discovered the Bandari Pass outlet. I was forced to engage them and seal the tunnel. They will bring more. That is their way. Good work, Saul. You have done well. Return to the core. Yes, Master Sun. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Special Agent X-132. G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Brian Bedell, Troy Sterling Neese, Kyle Stroud, Don Garrett, Brandon Kane, and Christian Wheeler as Special Agent X-13. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. <laughs>